Hello. This video is about living with and caring for a tracheostomy in the community and has been produced by the East of England Trauma Network in partnership with the East of England Critical Care Network. Preparing for transfer home can be an anxious time for a person with a tracheostomy and their family and we hope that this video will help outline the steps required in order to ensure a safe and smooth transition home. The video will also be of interest to healthcare practitioners involved in discharge planning and onward care. This resource is divided into six short chapters, which include a basic description of a tracheostomy, planning for discharge from an acute hospital, a tracheostomy safety box, setting up equipment at home, supporting communication following a tracheostomy. And the final chapter shows an interview with Mike, who's had his tracheostomy for the past two years, who explains what life is like at home and out and about with his tracheostomy. Also, a tracheostomy alert card has been produced for people to keep on their person whilst out and about in the community, which can be of assistance should a tracheostomy-related emergency occur. Chapter 1. What is a tracheostomy? In this chapter, we'll find out what a tracheostomy is, the names of the component parts, and why one might be needed. What is a tracheostomy? A tracheostomy is a surgical opening into the trachea or windpipe below the level of the larynx or voice box and is performed to secure and maintain a safe airway to breathe through. A small surgical opening is performed by a tracheostomy specialist into the trachea of the patient. A tracheostomy tube is inserted immediately into the opening and secured in place. A tracheostomy tube is made up of an outer tube, an inner tube, a flange, and it may or may not have a cuff, depending on the reasoning for the tracheostomy tube, and a subglottic port to aid removal of any secretions that have collected on the cuff, but this is not present on all tracheostomy tubes. Someone may need a tracheostomy for a variety of reasons, including following treatment for cancer, or after a neurological or respiratory illness causing respiratory difficulty. For a range of helpful information on tracheostomy care, including basic daily care, please visit the National Tracheostomy Safety Project website on www.tracheostomy.org.uk. Chapter 2. Preparing for discharge from hospital to the community. In this chapter, we will look at what preparations need to be made in order to ensure a safe and smooth discharge from the acute hospital into the community. It is essential that everyone is confident in the arrangements made and that communication is effective with everyone involved, including the patient's GP. So we're here today to meet for a discharge planning meeting for you. Um, if we go around the table and then everybody can speak about what they want to go through in terms of their own speciality and then we'll recap at the end. Is that okay? The people involved in discharge planning will vary according to the patient's overall needs but may include someone like myself, a tracheostomy specialist practitioner, a nurse who knows the person's day-to-day -day tracheostomy care needs well, a speech and language therapist who is an expert on communication and swallowing, a dietitian who advises on nutrition, a physiotherapist who gives guidance on breathing exercises and chest management. An occupational therapist who helps maximise the person's independence, as well as working with the physiotherapist on posture and seating. A doctor who will give advice on medical issues and changes. Appropriate members of the receiving community team will also be involved, such as the community care provider. Preparing for discharge into the community is often an anxious time for the patient and their relatives, so involving them in decisions about discharge planning from an early stage can help to alleviate any worries and concerns. One way of accurately sharing important information about the patient's tracheostomy management is to use the tracheostomy passbook or tracky pass. The tracky pass details the type of tracheostomy in place, when it is required for changing, current information regarding swallow, eating and drinking, and communication and any previous issues there may have been with the tracheostomy's management. The discharge process can take a long time to finalise due to the complexities of the patient's needs and the importance of finding the right level of care to support a safe discharge. 
For some, transfer to a rehabilitation centre may be considered. For others, care in a nursing home with special skills may be required. But wherever possible, discharge home with support will be the goal. Now let's consider the key components of a safe discharge. Community support and follow-up is in place. A list of important contacts has been shared. A tracky pass document has been filled in. A completed tracheostomy alert card has been issued, which gives step-by-step -step guidance on what to do if there is an emergency with a tracheostomy. Equipment, including a portable suction machine, a nebulizer, and daily supplies are in place. Registration with the Ambulance Service and Organisation of SMS Text Alert has been organised. The Electricity Board has been contacted to ensure priority, reconnection for essential equipment in case of a power cut. A helpful comprehensive discharge checklist can be found on the East of England Trauma Network website at www.eoetraumanetwork.nhs.uk. Chapter 3 the tracheostomy safety box. Caring for someone with a tracheostomy in the community is slightly different to caring for someone in an acute hospital setting. One thing, however, that doesn't change is the need for a tracheostomy safety box to be with the person at all times. The tracheostomy emergency box should contain the following items as standard. Some additional items may be included according to the individual need. For ease of viewing, I have taken the items out of their packaging but obviously they will need to be stored in their sterile packs. Here are the basics. Tracheostomy tube, the same size as the patient has already. A tracheostomy tube, a size smaller than the patient has. Tracheostomy inner tubes. A 10 mil syringe. Tracheostomy securing tape, tracheostomy dressing, paediatric face mask in case of any emergency, lubricating gel, a pair of gloves, and a pair of scissors. If the patient has an uncuffed tracheostomy, and resuscitation is required, it will need to be changed to a tube with a cuff. So a spare cuff tube a size smaller than the patient has in place is necessary. It also makes sense to have the patient's tracky pass document in the box plus their tracheostomy alert card when out and about in the community. These will aid those helping the patient to take the correct actions if their tracheostomy needs urgent attention. Chapter four, bedside equipment in a community setting. As previously mentioned, people with tracheostomies may be discharged to one of three settings, a rehabilitation unit, a specialist nursing home, or to their own home. The bedside equipment used in each of these places will look broadly similar to that used in the acute hospital, but may look slightly different. Let's see how. Wherever the discharge destination, it is essential that a work surface that is able to be cleaned is allocated for day-to-day -day tracheostomy equipment. This could be a clinical trolley, such as this one here, or a table with an easy wipe surface. In a home environment, you could also use some form of easy clean storage system. And these can be purchased easily from a high street store, such as this stack of drawers. Maintaining hygiene is extremely important, whatever the care setting. If the person needs help with their tracheostomy care, then thorough hand washing and access to personal protective equipment is essential. This includes clean, disposable gloves and aprons. Appropriate waste disposal is also key. In the home setting, clinical waste bags are available from district nurses or your GP surgery. Suction liquids can be dispersed of down the toilet or if possible contained in a suction vac sac liner and disposed of as clinical waste. A spare inner tube should be available at all times. The spare tube can be kept in a dedicated clean sterile bowl and this should be changed once a day. The tube itself can be either disposable or for reusable use. Sterile water should be used in a clinical setting. But in a home environment, it may be adequate to use boiled and cooled tap water. Advice regarding this will be given before discharge. The inner tube is cleaned using a cleaning swab or brush, which should be replaced every day or after each use, depending on the manufacturer's guidance. In hospital, a wall suction unit is often used. 
In the community, a portable suction machine is required, which can be both mains and battery operated so that it can be used on the go, and many of them come with an in-car charger. The suction machine is used for oral suction when attached to the Yanka sucker, and tracheal suction when attached to a suction catheter. For people with a cuff tube, a cuff pressure manometer, similar to this one, should be available. And supplies of 10 mil syringes should also be available. Devices to ensure adequate humidification will also be supplied. These might include a humidification bib, a heat moisture exchange device or HME, a nebulizer. This is a portable nebulizer to be taken home. A supply of spare tracheostomy dressings and neckties also need to be stored. Some lubricating gel, some saline, and some sterile gauze for cleaning the stoma. Some form of barrier cream to protect the skin around the stoma is also useful. For safety while showering, a shower guard is a good idea to prevent water from entering the tracheostomy. Finally, in any setting where care is being delivered, a daily record sheet of this care should be kept at all times. I have an example here of one that can be downloaded from the East of England Trauma Network website at www.eoetraumanetwork.nhs.uk. Chapter 5, Supporting Communication After a Tracheostomy. The speech and language therapist will assess communication to establish the best way for the patient to communicate with their tracheostomy. This may be as simple as using pen and paper, or it could involve using an electronic communication aid. Here is a selection of communication aids that may be considered. Here we have a whiteboard and pen. This is an alphabet chart, or a picture chart, which can be personalised to share needs and wants with those around you, may be another option. The patient may wish to use a laptop to type their message. Some communication aids allow you to write a message and the aid then says it out loud. You can get all sorts of apps for tablets which can be used for typing, drawing or setting up personalised communication pages. If the person has an uncuffed tracheostomy tube, their voice box is functioning and their mouth muscles are strong enough, then there are ways in which they may be able to speak. Some people use their finger to cover the end of their tracheostomy, forcing the air up through their voice box. For others, they may wear a speaking valve. This valve means that the person would breathe in via their tracheostomy and out through their mouth, enabling air to pass through their vocal cords and create sound. There are also a range of other devices that the speech and language therapist can advise on according to the person's needs. Chapter 6 Living with a tracheostomy, a personal perspective. Hi Mike, I'm a tracheostomy specialist nurse, come to do a home visit if that's okay. Yeah, lovely, please come in, come in. Thank you. So how's it been since you've been back home from hospital, Mike? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Things are settling down. Um, no problems. Nothing that, you know, I couldn't cope with. Pretty good, yeah. Good. Mike, how has having a tracheostomy impacted on your daily life? Well, as, as I had um, severe breathing issues beforehand, it's not impacted as much as one might think. Uh, I still have to pace myself when I'm doing stuff, you know, to be coming short of breath. I have to pace how I talk and, uh, and that sort of thing. But um, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's not particularly uh, impacted on me as, as much as, you know, people may think. What about your daily routine, such as cleaning and washing? Well, pretty much the same as, uh, as it ever was, really, apart from the extra thing, which is just cleaning around here and such like, making sure there's no problems there. Mm. Um, 
I thought you were cooking fine, I, you know. I, I made meals, I looked after my parents on that score because they're elderly. Um, as for going out and about, I just have to pace myself. Uh, otherwise it can become very short of breath. And generally speaking, it become actually more uh, of an issue for people watching me than it does for myself because I know what to expect and I deal and cope with it whereas they tend to get a bit concerned. Do you continue to drive? Yeah, sure. Um, driving uh, with, with this tracheostomy hasn't affected me at all. Um, all it is is I'm, I'm, I'm aware that it's there. But there's no pain, there's no issue of that score. There's no real restriction of movement. So, yeah, driving is fine. Get by with that, no problem. Did you find that having a tracheostomy has impacted on your relationships with your family or friends? No, not really. Um, the only thing is, because I have to pause for breath, if, there's, if you're in a group of more than two people, everybody wants to get their say in, so quite often I miss out on my input into a situation. But if it's one on one, maybe even two on one, there's no great issue. It's only when you get into larger groups. Uh, friends and that, people that know me, obviously, they know what this is like, they've seen it, they've experienced what I'm like when I'm trying to talk, so generally speaking, they're fine. And as for strangers and random people, or even shops, if you like, they can see the, the tube I've got here, because mostly I have it uncovered, for ease of using the finger to block the hole, so I can talk clearer. Mm. They tend to, you know, be good enough to give you the time to, to speak and articulate what I'm trying to get over. Are there any things that you wish you could do that you are no longer able to? Yeah, I think probably the main one is, is swimming. Having a hole in your throat is not really conducive to being able to sustain yourself in water. So I have to avoid that. Um, silly little things like showers. I need a, a waterproof bib, not very glamorous, but again, it's to prevent water going down into the tube and down into my lungs. Mm -hmm. um, other things, not really, because I'm, I'm, I'm not that athletic these days. Not on a personal scale for me as such, no. Do you have any general advice for future patients or current patients having a tracheostomy? in terms of living with it? Well, um, in, in my experience, the, the first thing I noticed uh, after waking up uh, and after the first couple of days where the nurse is doing the cleaning, when I went to do my first clean around the trekking uh, area, I sort of almost threw myself in a little bit of a panic because as I wiped away the, the, the debris and the muck, I, I thought I'd had a, a, a thumping great scab. Mm. So I thought, oh, okay, um, what's that about, you know? The second time, which was a little bit later on in the day, because you need to regularly clean at that stage, it, it was what looked like pus. It, you know, it was that sort of colour, greeny, yellow. I thought, oh, my word, mm. what's that about? Have I got an infection? You know, oh, worry, worry. But as it turns out, what it actually was, mm. what it actually was, uh, in, the, in both instances, was, was snot. Uh, the, the scab was actually the gr dried, crystallised, and the runny, pussy looking stuff was where it hadn't yet crystallised. Uh, th things like that, um, you know, did sort of blow in your mind the first time it happened, and it does put you a bit on the back foot. But once you, once you get the handle on what it is, it's, it's no, no great problem, obviously, because, you know, it's, it's not major, it's not a problem. Um, mm. and, and the nurses are there anyway, so my advice to anybody, make use of the expertise. Don't be afraid to sort of, you know, mm. ask questions that you may think are a little bit foolish, but they, these people, they've seen it all, they've done it all, they've, they've been asked the questions before. There's probably not much you could ask them that, that they couldn't answer. 
But the main thing, yes, use the expertise. When you can, talk to people, find out their experiences. The consumables that you will use are provided by the NHS on a re-prescription charge. Um, and that will go through your GP or district nurse team. Yep, that's right. Um, as I said, I've got the initial one waiting for me at home. Um, I order it and it's all free and it does actually stay on the forms as you order it. These items are free. Um, it, it goes through my GP but is paid for by the National Health. So in actual fact nothing comes out of my own pocket on that score. We've now come to the end of our video about living with and caring for a tracheostomy in the community. We hope you found it helpful, have improved your knowledge and also increased your confidence along the way. Thank you for watching and don't forget to look at the following websites for more information about tracheostomy care. Goodbye.